Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 145 of the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers here, as always, with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. Excited about this one. Me too. And so are our listeners. We are talking about, okay, we know you're stuck inside, you guys, because it's either (laughs) raining or snowing or you're sick or all of those things. Sometimes Um, all at once. And so we've done kind of sick day episodes before, but this is more about like, how do we pre-stock our homes knowing we're going to be stuck inside? And we're talking about everything from like crafts and activities for kids to do, but also stuff like what do you not want to run out of so that if one of those weeks strikes where it's either a blizzard or the stomach flu or whatever, that you, you kind of feel like you can hunker down. Cause I, I, you know, there, there's some fun parts of hunkering down, at least in the beginning, but you gotta be stocked. You gotta be, you have to have those supplies. It's (laughs) like the Boy Scouts, uh, but Boy Scouts always be prepared, right? Right. And of course, Megan, you and I are speaking from more years of experience. We've probably learned the hard way what not to run out of. And, you know, we have the wherewithal now to stock up by, you know, thinking ahead and running to Target. So trust us, we've been there when you're out of Tylenol in the middle of the night and someone has a 103 degree fever. Yes. We've, we've been there. We've, we've We've, been there. We're going to help you guys hopefully not be there. Um, Yeah. This is going to be fun. We'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, Annie's Kit Clubs. So Annie's Kit Clubs makes it easy for your kids to become makers and builders with crafting and woodworking kits for kids ages 7 to 12. And Sarah, I know we've talked uh, about those so-called kits that you get, like craft kits that end up just being like they end up being out huge mess and then mom ends up having to do all the work. Yes. Uh, But Annie's Kit Clubs is not like that. It is the kids can actually do it independently. And so we got a bunch of um, the kits in the mail to try out. So I let Clara and Ruby, who are almost nine and 10, um, do a couple of them independently. And I didn't have to do anything. Like they were able to open everything. They were able to read the directions. They were able to figure it out. So it was really great because it was one of those days where I had something else going on and just didn't have the time to spend with them. And they got to do something. Um, they got to do something creative that didn't involve looking at a screen. And I felt really good about that. Yeah, it is. Everything comes really well laid out. And also, I appreciated that the projects were not gigantic in either size or scope. Like it was a very manageable, doable, and yet totally cute and creative craft to do. So yeah, the ages are geared towards seven to 12. Um, And there is also a Young Woodworkers Club, which is a similar idea, only it's a woodworking project that arrives. And um, I got to try one of those with my kids as well. And it, they just felt so grown up. Um, there was like a child size hammer that came along and again, the easy yeah. to follow instructions. So it was great. I think we both appreciate that little to no supervision is required um, when it's in the age range of seven to 12. And I would say that um, I think younger kids, if you did want to do a project with your kid, these would also make a great, you know, like a big sister, little sister working on it together yep. um, could totally be doable. Um, so the way it works is kits arrive about every four to six weeks with all the materials your kids need to make a beautiful craft or woodworking project. You might need household supplies like glue and scissors and a ruler. I think those were the things we needed, but everything else comes ready to create the finished product. The kids feel super proud, super accomplished, um, and you feel like you're not handing them an iPad. You're handing right. them something else, which exactly. is awesome. Um, nice. So we have a really good deal going with Annie's Kit Clubs. Um, the deal is a little different depending on if you want the craft kit or the woodworking kit, but it's 80% off the Creative Girls Club or 50% off the Young Woodworkers Club, both of which are amazing discounts. Um, and you get that by going to annieskitclubs.com slash life. So again, it's annieskitclubs.com slash life. And on that page, you'll see all the different kits to choose from um, and the discounts that you will get are built right in. So you don't need a promo code. So awesome. Yeah. Check it out. Check them out. So shall we dive in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I don't know. Like, I feel like we're like, we're helping people um, prepare for a long journey. I know. Or the apocalypse. <laughs> I was right. the apocalypse. This. <laughs> I'm looking at this list of stuff that you made and I'm like, wow, that's <laughs> a lot of detail, but that's okay. Cause well, we're helping people be like prepared. Free associating of like, what do I really not like to run out of? And again, we're yes. thinking about like everything from sick days to snow days to yucky rainy days. 
Um, and also I would say season of life. If you, if you have like three little kids, the weather might yes. be great and you still just really, it's hard to leave the you house. You don't want to leave. Yeah. No, it's Here, hard. maybe you're about to have a baby or something. Yes. I mean, there's oh, just no. like lots of ways that this could be You're totally applicable. right. Postpartum or at yep. the very end of a pregnancy when you don't want to yep. go too far from home. Um, okay. So I made a quick list of things in the kitchen that I just don't ever like to run out of. And guess what the first thing on the list is? It's a beverage, I bet. Yeah. Two beverages. <laughs> okay. One for the morning and one for the end of the day. Wine. And which, and which one <laughs> wine you choose is, when depends yeah. on the day, probably, right? right? So I never run out of coffee and wine. And I say that like slightly tongue in cheek, but it's it's really true. Like you will never... Yeah. Um, I just I just don't run out. Um, yeah, I, I try. I ran out of tea, actually today and I had to go out I had to go like dig through the cupboards and I found this like really old loose leaf tea and it was super weak and stale and yeah. it made my morning very sad yeah so I try as well to not yes. run out of tea and wine as well yeah. I think that's a self-care that's a self-care thing like just make sure that you're stocked with the beverages that make you feel like a functioning human <laughs> um okay but uh, maybe on a more creative note um I really like to have the pantry stocked with basic baking ingredients because I think baking with your kids can be some way to use the time when yep. if you're stuck inside, kids love it. Um, it just feels cozy and homey. And there's nothing worse than being like, oh, let's make cookies. And you feel like such a you good mom something. and then you don't have baking yes. soda. So yep. I feel like these are ingredients that don't they don't spoil in general um, and you can buy them relatively in bulk. I'm a big fan of my pantry is not super, super organized. It's not like a walk in. I mean, it is it's a nice closet size, but it's not like a giant walk in. Um so it's not super organized, but I am a fan of containers that kind of seal and let you see things. So I hate bags, mm. like bags that are like folded yeah. over or like tied up with a. So anyway, I feel like if you stock your pantry with flour, sugar, brown sugar, powdered sugar, baking powder, baking soda, vanilla, and then chocolate chips, you can make almost anything. If you have eggs yes, in the fridge, agreed. you know, often you might need eggs or milk, um, but you can make most things. And I feel like, um, even if you're not, you don't think of yourself as a baker, having those things on hand, that's an automatic activity to do with little kids. Yep. So. Totally agree. I have had a, a similar, um, a similar, I guess, strategy. And I, I have these things to your point about not liking the bags flopped over. Yeah. I have these cool, um, I'll have to look and see what they're called, but they're like these container, like see-through containers, but the top like has a little button and when you push the button yes. and it pops open, yes. like the seals yes. broken. Mm -hmm. And I love those cause you can do them with one hand. Like if you, nice. if you're, you've got your arms full of stuff, you just pop, like it's not like a jar where you have to hold it with your arm and then yep. unscrew it or whatever. It's like just easy. Anyway, just made me think of that when you were talking about. Yeah. And I reuse um, containers all the time. Um, like the ones that, um, pasta or rice come in that are yeah. not bags, but like more like a Tupperware style. And then I'll yep. use those. Um, I will add that if you have cream of tartar on hand, which isn't an often used ingredient, then you can make homemade Play-Doh. So I Did you know you can also make Play-Doh without cream of tartar? You can. Because okay. I have, in a pinch, had to look up <laughs> recipes that don't have the cream of tartar. I think the cream of tartar keeps it fresh longer. Oh, that makes sense. Because so our, I, our yeah. homemade Play-Doh lasts forever. Yeah. Like, so forever. I think you can. So don't let that, you know, it's a good thing yeah. to have on hand, but don't let the lack. Just look for like recipe no cream of tartar or something yeah. like that you'll you'll find some i will pop my favorite homemade play-doh recipe in the show notes which will probably make that show notes like our highest visited page ever because i feel <laughs> like those are the, <laughs> no one ever goes to the show notes right. now that i was a play-doh recipe oh man um, it's been a long time since i've made homemade play-doh and now i'm just thinking about the smell it's it's lovely and the way it feels in your hands when it's warm yeah. oh and I you and i i mean some right now our listeners know this we are not crafty like make everything from scratch moms, but no. you and I both love homemade Play-Doh because it's stupid easy and yes. it's better than, it's better than store-bought Play-Doh. It lasts longer. Yes. Um, yeah. It's like warm and squishy. Yeah. It's great. It just smells so good. Like something, okay. Oh, that's just bringing me like, that's just giving me like nostalgia flashbacks to yeah. when I was like at home with a bunch of little kids and we made yeah. it pretty regularly. Aww. Aww. Um, um, <laughs> what else? Oh, so my last one on food was, if you, especially if you kind of keep treats to a minimum and you feed your kids healthy, if you stash some treats that your kids don't know that are in the house, if they know they're in the house, this is a game changer. But if they don't know that they're in the house. So my examples were like hot cocoa mix, like somewhere in the back. If, you know, if they don't get hot chocolate as often, then you can pull that out. And also a can of ready whip, like a can of whipped cream can make oh, yeah. anything special, even if it's like pancakes for dinner and then you put yes. whipped cream on it. So I don't know. I love Ready Whip. I don't know if that's gross or weird, but I love just a good squirt of 
store bought whipped uh, yeah, cream. Yeah, no, I agree. And it does. You can put on fruit, and it makes yes. the fruit suddenly special. You can do a lot with it. So yeah, and it just yeah, really it feels time. feels super special. So, um, yeah. I have to I have to point out a funny little story that you so my niece Cecily lived with me for a little while, and she one time said, Aunt Megan. This house is the most bread secure house I've ever lived in. <laughs> I love this story. Um, she's like, I just feel so bread secure. And I, I was laughing because I was really paranoid about running out of bread. Like, I think I've talked about that on the show before. But I, like, to me, that felt like mothering was like yes. having bread in the bread box. Like it, you had to have it. Um, and so I would sometimes overbuy. OK, I would often overbuy bread and uh-huh. I'd have too much and then I'd have to throw away bread that had gotten moldy or whatever. But it always made me feel really good to have a loaf or two of bread in the bread box at all times. Well, I've been doing like low carb eating for uh-huh. the last three months or so. <laughs> and so I've been buying bread, but like I'm not eating it. And I realized the whole time it was only me eating the bread <laughs> because now the bread is just going stale like immediately because I, I buy it I only buy like one loaf and then I wait a week and I look and it's still there and I'm like why is nobody eating this bread that's and so funny h- how do how do they get through life with that bread I don't get it but all that overbuying I was doing thinking it was like nurturing my family it was it's just, just me. you it was you it were was nurturing yourself you might have exactly. wasted away if you had not had all that bread during your trenches of mothering years that's true all that <laughs> nursing I did I needed bread for that so yeah it's just kind of funny <laughs> so. I love that. Anything well, else from we... your pantry? Oh, I think no, I, I think you kind of covered yeah. it because honestly, on days when I'm hunkered down, I don't really, it's, in, you'd think that those would be big cooking days. Yeah. But I typically just do stuff like baking. And yeah. I, because maybe I don't have then the ingredients for, like, I don't have the meat and fresh veg. Right. That I would no, need and for that's, something that else. wasn't on yeah. my list by any means. I don't yeah. think you need a, a healthy meal. I just need Play Doh and <laughs> no, chocolate no, just... and. Coffee. Play-Doh and cookies. And there you go. There you yep. go. There you go. But there's some other stuff we could talk about that's not kitchen related for yeah. sure. Um, and some of these are specific to like my climate. Yeah, but uh, there's a lot mm. of our listeners in winter climate, so you yeah. need to kind of own this section. Well, right. Okay. So, so some of the things that like I find that if I don't have extras of, I end up regretting it. Um, would be things like salt for the steps. Okay. And that stuff goes really fast. So you'll have like a big full container of salt to get the ice, you know, off of your steps. And you need to do that, says the girl who's fallen down like three times this year. <laughs> um, the, it goes fast, mm-hmm. especially if you're letting the kids, you know, be the ones sprinkling it because right. they're not always judicious with the with the uh, portion control. Right. So always have an extra one of those. I like to make sure I keep the my shovel like right by the back door. Um, raise your hand, moms, if who live in cold climates, if you've ever let a kid shovel and then the kid throws the shovel and then it snows <laughs> oh, no. and then you never find the shovel oh, again no. until spring. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> and I've stupidly done it too. like thought I had it leaned against the house and it fell down. And then and but at least scary. then I know. But at least then I kind of know where it is. OK, so you know? just humor me for a second. What would you then do? Like, let's say that happened and you got another 10 inches overnight. Yeah. And you open your back door and you're. You don't know where your shovel is and there's snow. What would you do? Like you shove it with your feet? Yeah. You just okay. drive. You just drive hard. That's why I have okay. a four wheel drive car. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for me, because it's not absolutely like the steps leading to. Um, I have a short little walk, I guess yeah. is what I'm getting at from the back door to my car. So as long as I can like get to my car. Yeah. And as long as the snow hasn't been shoved up so high when the plows come through that I can't back out that's happened before um then I'm okay but yeah like sometimes it literally has been stamping down the snow with my feet (laughs) sometimes it's like pulling it like kind of pushing it aside with your feet it's it's dumb and I don't recommend it so just keep that shovel on hand people (laughs) just make sure you do that um but what about stuff that like what about stuff that would also apply in your situation like yeah making sure you've got batteries making yeah. sure you've got um stuff in your medicine cabinet yeah so i have a yeah. few a few thoughts here so my kids are still relatively young and when they were even younger i find that when you're stuck inside you end up playing with toys and getting out gadgets that haven't seen the light for a while whether it's yeah. like some battery operated toy that's like fun but they forgot about it it can definitely have new life on a snow day or a sick day, but you have to have batteries. So I feel very, I feel battery secure in my house when I have most types of batteries. I mean, maybe not the super obscure nine volt weird ones, but, um, even the little, the little disc ones that go into certain little things. Um, I like to have 
a variety of batteries because I feel like kids yeah. can be entertained by that stuff. You know, you know, the kind of toys I'm talking about, like they light up and they make music and you were really happy when they ran out of batteries because, you know, but all of a sudden you put batteries in those toys and that can keep kids busy for an hour because they haven't seen it in a while. So, right. I think. Yeah. And then, of course, like for more functional purposes, like if your electricity goes out, you want batteries for flashlights and all that. But I, I was more thinking about like kid toys that are entertaining. And of course, a sick day is when you realize it's out of batteries and you don't have any batteries. So I think batteries right. is a good one. Um, uh, kind of staying on the technology front, um, we did an episode last summer about tech and family travel and like keeping devices charged, not just charged, but keeping them loaded up with the things that your kids are going to want on the road. And I think days stuck at home are similar. I mean, I'm assuming your Wi-Fi is not going to go out. Does Wi-Fi go out if you have a blizzard? Um, It can. It can. Yeah, well, it can get well, like if if um, it would it'd be more likely if it like was a big windstorm or something. Right. Yeah, right. but um, so I wasn't so much thinking about like no power or no Wi-Fi, but just things like I'm a big fan of audiobooks, as you guys know, just making sure like, you know, your passwords, you know, like you have the right apps on your tablets. I mean, I'm a huge I rely heavily on the iPads when I need them. Part of the reason mm -hmm. I don't let my kids use them all the time is because when I want them to sit and watch an iPad, I I want them to sit and watch an iPad. So I guess it's just a general note of keeping keeping devices charged, making sure that you're kind of staying on top of what games your kids like to play, keeping them downloaded. Like there's nothing worse than having a sick toddler that you just want to watch a show. So they'll, you know, sit and take their nebulizer medicine or whatever. Right. And then you can't <laughs> log into Netflix where their favorite right. show is like it's a general preparedness. It's sort of like a Boy Scoutness about technology. I don't yes. know. Yes. Yeah. I, I am that way because I I I don't like being caught in a bind that way. And I am not that way. I'm actually kind of terrible about it. And so I will, this is all good for me to hear because yeah. I have been caught without, without the proper batteries now on Apple several ID occasions. That you don't know the password for. Okay. Like, remember that? Remember how, yeah. remember the saga of trying to get me logged yeah. into <laughs> Apple? That was silly. Well, but for a long time, I wasn't the one taking care of those details. And now I'm kind of taking care of them for myself. So it's just, it's like a learning curve. And your kids are older now, which is great for our listeners right. to hear. Like eventually your kids will, you know, they're very tech savvy, these kids. Um, yeah. So they will, they will probably manage those things for their for their own selves. But I am still in the place where if I'm putting on a movie, I need to know how to get the movie and what the password is. And yeah. 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 yeah totally agreed. Um, well, you know, you mentioned the nebulizer and that reminded me that, you know, whether you're preparing for a sick day or a day stuck inside or not, that's the kind of thing where I feel like I need some organization around it because yeah. stuff like, um, you know, my kids, they don't, they're too big for nebulizers now, but Jacob or sorry, Clara and Owen both have an inhaler okay. because every now and then just randomly they'll get wheezy mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen very often. And it's not something that they have to use much Daily. at all. Right. Yeah. So it's very easy to totally forget. Right. That you have to have like a refill on yeah. hand if you start getting low and that's yeah. stuff that you just all you have to do is call the doctor and they yeah. will call you in a refill. It's not a big deal. But if you don't do it. And then you need it. You don't have it. So I almost I mean, I'm. this is not a tip. This is me saying, like, I need some kind of structure around yeah. those purchases so that I don't run out of stuff that's important. I don't know if this help is me help. Well, I don't know if this is helpful at all, but specifically for um, asthma and breathing inhaler medicines and nebulizer medicines. And if you don't know what we're talking about, then your lucky children haven't had like bad bronchiolitis or right. asthma, which is great. Um, but yours and mine both have, Megan. Um, multiple doctors and pharmacists have told me that the expiration dates on those are really not a big deal. And I know I shouldn't say that I'll get in trouble, but there's certain things where when they're expired, like you really, you shouldn't use them. And right. the, the doc, cause I have wondered like if something is one or two months, um, we have both an inhaler and nebulizer, the liquid albuterol that goes in the nebulizer. Mm -hmm. And a couple of times it's been maybe two or three months past its date because we haven't used it in a year. And I've wondered, and I've had the doctor tell me, no, you'd absolutely be fine as long as it's stored in kind of a cool, dark. Place. Right. So that's just one thing I'll offer that came directly from my pediatrician. Good to know. <laughs> um, and you always wonder, like, is this date a suggestion? Is it really important? Right. So that's one thing. But yeah, I, I mean, I guess one thing I have done is if somebody starts coming down with a cold, I, I just look to see how we are on the albuterol. Um, so, but I don't really have a good system for it either. I think our inhaler right now is probably expired. Um, 
But the the albuterol is what I have relied on more heavily for the nebulizer, and that is a good if you have if you have kids who occasionally need that, make sure that you have it because there's yeah. there would be nothing worse. You'd have a really sick kid who can't breathe, you know. Right. And yeah, the, yes. your alternatives then are like urgent care, calling, right. you know. So that's a good one. And either um, way, it involves leaving the house. Like even if yes. all you have to do is run to get pick up a, a prescription, right? That's still kind of defeating the purpose of like hunkering down. So, right. right. Yeah. And totally. maybe doing that with a sick kid. And that's no fun. And I think for like the other medicine cabinet basics, like non prescription Tylenol, ibuprofen, I always like to have Benadryl, um, like both topical and oral Benadryl. And then, like, you know, like a Zyrtec, like an, an, a non Benadryl allergy medicine, like a Zyrtec or. Do we usually um, have Claritin. On yeah. Hand. Yeah. Um, and so plenty of those and those you can pick up on your regular grocery store and mm-hmm. Target runs. So I don't know. You could I mean, you could put a reminder for once a month to kind of check the stock. I, I feel yeah. like usually the trigger for me is someone has a little sniffle and they don't need the medicine yet. But that is my reminder to be like, OK, let's assume this. Let's assume the worst and right. assume that in 48 hours, this is going to be a full blown hacking cough. Like, what's the status? Because with a kid with the sniffles, you could still run out to the store, but maybe the next day you don't want to. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I like our family uses um, I pretty much solely use ibuprofen. Um, that's like all I ever use. I don't yeah, you're take not cold medicines. Yeah. I'm not and I'm not a Tylenol person. I don't take allergy medicines unless it's I usually feel worse when I take those kinds of medicines. So I just typically don't take them. And what I find myself doing with the kids who don't take a lot of medicine, like I just, there aren't a lot of opportunities for for us to use stuff up is I end up like, like bulk buying stuff when it's on sale or like Uh if I have some Walgreens points attached. So I have a ton of it and then suddenly I have none. Right. And the same thing with band-aids. Like I will have (laughs) band-aids of of every size, every shape, every, um, you know, material i've got right. plastic ones i've got the fabric ones i've got all of them and then suddenly they're just gone yeah and i don't know how that happens i need to have some like i almost feel like i need to have um like a subscription kit like a <laughs> yes something like that or like i don't know maybe maybe i start buying that stuff on amazon and yeah. have and get reminders or something yes. i don't know just something but it also they seem to go there's not really a predictable way like i know yeah. how long a gallon of milk lasts right i, I can yes. plan but I don't know how long a bottle of children's ibuprofen will yes. last. And I remember we know. were talking about our my almost 10 and your almost nine year old are like still kids. But if you give the kid dosage for they a have child to drink that the whole big, bottle. they just drink like three <laughs> cups full. Yes. And I'm like, OK, Allegra, here is one adult Advil. Swallow it because they're not giving you a third yep. of the bottle of the ibuprofen. So, yes. yeah, they start to use that more. Um that made me think of another thing to have on hand, especially with little babies, um, is dosage, dosage information for all of these medicines because, yeah. um, and I have to give my sister a shout out because, you know, she's a new mom and she has all her friends are new moms. And I think they were talking about having those dosage instructions, the really clear ones where you feel really confident. This is how much to give and taping it yeah. like on the inside of your medicine cabinet, just That's so it's all, and like, you know how tiny it is. And then the bottle gets smudged and it's the middle of the night. And yep. you're, I just, yeah. Um, and same with the little, the little dispensers, either the cups or the syringes. Yes. Like every time we've been on antibiotics, I just save the syringes. I keep them in yes. the same drawer. Have in a our, stock. Of yeah. Those in our kitchen. They where go we missing. Keep, yeah. Like teaspoons and stuff. And yep. actually the syringe ones I've used for other random, like cooking or other, there's just a lot of uses for those liquid syringes. Um, and for sure you want to have a few on hand because if you're, you know, giving multiple medicines to multiple kids and washing them and all yep. that. So um, that would be a good one as well. Yeah. Well, I think this is probably a good time to take a quick break. And then we're going to yeah. get into kind of like now that you are covered on food, wine, medicine, and salt <laughs> batteries. Walk, batteries. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. now you've avoided the apocalypse. So let's have some fun inside. So that's yeah, what we're going to talk it. about next. Um, but first up, we're going to talk about Bissell's Bark Bath. Yeah, so you would. I think this is actually um, a great way to segue into yeah. the section about having fun because you wouldn't think bathing your dog would be fun. It's usually the worst. Um, and here, where it's winter, you you can't take them outside and hose them down. My bathroom drain is all clogged up. Gross. So I was really excited about the Bissell Bark Bath because you can bathe your pet indoors with no mess. So no it mess. doesn't like it doesn't create suds there's not water everywhere you don't have to rinse um you can use it in any room in your house and it works with any length of fur or hair i didn't realize that some dogs have hair not fur until you until you trained me about this um sarah but and it's just 
like genius. I don't know why, you know, this hasn't been part of my life up until now, but I'm very excited about yeah, it. Yeah. If you are a dog owner and you're dealing with um, groomer appointments that are either expensive or you just keep putting them off because you have other dependents to make appointments for, that's what I kept finding. I finally yeah. delegated it to Brian because I was like, I already have three people to make appointments for. You do the groomer, the dog. Um, so Bissell sent me a bark bath and I got to try it with Xander. And so what it looks like is it's an all-in-one system. So um, you can carry it to your bathroom, to your kitchen, anywhere in your house. And the water and the no rinse shampoo are all internal to the system. And there's sort of like a little, if you think of like a vacuum system, um, a little nozzle. And um, Xander didn't mind it at all. Like the noise didn't bother him. Comes with this soft little thing to lie it on. And the instructions were so great. It was easy to put together, but also gave tips for actually bathing your dog like how to introduce it to your dog if you have a more skittish dog and he has been skittish at the groomer and he was totally fine with the bark bath so um the the nozzles kind of get down to the dirty part of the skin and it's just really designed to kind of suction up the dirt and add a little water but magically seriously magically you don't end up wet yourself at the end of this process i Um, love it so it's great well, if you want to try it out um, and check out the Bark Bath, if you use our code, you will get two bottles of free no rinse shampoo with your order. So go to Bissell.com slash mom. That is bissel dot com slash mom. And you'll get those two bottles of uh, no rinse shampoo for free when you order a Bark Bath. Yeah. And use that coupon code mom at checkout as well. Awesome. All right. So, so diving into fun. Diving in. So um, I posted something on social media. Um, and actually I will talk about this when we talk about crafts, but, um, our listeners were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for doing this topic. We've been stuck inside for a week already. (laughs) So no pressure, but I feel like we're at the end of winter now and people are, they have used up all of their ideas. So I hope we have some new ones. I don't know. Um, all right. Do you want me to start? Sure. I mean, a lot of this stuff, we've got a, bun- a big list. Yeah, I think just these a are big things list. both of us have done. Yeah, um, exactly. So we can just... I, You know what? I, I think I'll start, actually, okay. because I just want to I want to talk about how much time my kids spent in the bathtub <laughs> okay, when they yes. were little and how much the bathtub can be a lifesaver. Yes. There's something about your, your kid is contained. It's fun for them yep. and it's novel enough and you can add things to the bath. Yes. So they don't have to go drag toys out. You just keep putting toys in <laughs> with them. Um, and so I loved having like bath toys that were kind of up, up on a shelf and swapping those in and out. You can get those bath crayons and other fun, like um, they have bath, bath markers. They have all kinds of fun. They have like that bath chalk yep. that dissolves and makes it a fun color. Like yep. there's so many bath products and they're not terribly expensive usually. And you can get them in a variety of places and you could just have like stuff put away to yes. make the bath even more fun than it already is, which is already pretty darn fun. And then you know what you do? You sit on the toilet with your computer or a phone yeah. or or a book. Yeah. And you just like have a little Calgon you, moment of your own. Yeah. Or you straighten up, clean the bathroom or like fold laundry. Like, Or you can do that. Well, you know. I mean, sometimes like you don't even have a spare minute to fold your laundry. Right. So you can no, sit there and you. do that and listen to a podcast or put a podcast on for them if they're old enough. Um, I also, a couple notes on baths. I also, my kids got a huge kick out of if I bathed them in a different bathroom than normal. I don't know why that was so well, that's fun. That's so funny. But okay. like we had this downstairs bathroom bathroom in our Arizona house that um we didn't really use the tub because it wasn't it, nobody's bedroom was down there and every once in a while we would do a bath downstairs and just the novelty was enough to be like ooh this is weird and same with a bath at a different time of day a bath in the morning right. instead of the evening yes I'm a huge huge fan and I think in terms of stocking our home you kind of nailed it like a few things tucked away or didn't you once tell me that the bath is where old toys go to die in your house yes so like yes. when you have like plastic toys that probably aren't bath toys and shouldn't be used long term in the bath but they're safe like I'm not talking right. about batteries and electrical toys but <laughs> um things that like would probably get moldy after a while but if right. toss them in for one or two baths and it's novel and then chuck yes them I had forgotten that that was where they go to die you told yeah me that. um and I and well, then they and then it's like they get new life for just a little while then yep. you're like oh these are all wet and they're gonna get moldy so I have to throw them out and then you just start over yeah also did so your funny. kids love washcloths in the bath like yes. just small square washcloths would be their favorite toys. Or in Tupperware containers yes. and spoons. I mean, you can yeah. just throw anything. Like literally, except for batteries and electronics, you can throw <laughs> pretty much anything into the bath and suddenly it's like a brand new thing and it's fun. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and I, I will add that I did a lot of sink baths with my babies up to, you know, up to like 18 month olds um, right. because I found it a way the baby was always happy in the sink. 
Um, and then I feel like when I had other kids, it was in a more central part of the house. So I might be able to kind of keep an eye on them um, doing a project or something. Yeah. And the baby was in the bath. And you can't really you can't go far. If your baby's in the bath, you no. cannot really step away from the sink. But if everybody's contained, the baby is usually super happy. That was my go to yes. for a fussy baby from six months to 18 months. It was a sink bath. So. And speaking of sinks, that was also a great um, like stuck inside the house thing. When the kids were preschoolers, yes. you just fill fill the sink with soapy water yes. and throw some stuff in and ask them to wash the dishes. Yes. And so, you know, yeah. you know what? It, that brings up a good point. That is such that is a, such a go to for preschoolers. But I never had a great stool for that. And I would say since we're talking about products to stock your house with, if you have a stool that lets a preschooler sit, stand up at the sink. I know we've talked about the ones like the towers that you can buy that are fairly expensive, like the wooden towers yes. where kids can help you cook. I've had, I've, I've been hit and miss for those. They take up a lot of space. They can be kind of awkward and I've still had kids fall out of them to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, but I'm thinking of like the folding step stools that would get a preschooler. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. And I, I feel like I didn't ever have one that was quite tall enough. So I would invest in that. If you have little kids who yes. would have fun standing at the sink, get a good stool that you feel like they're safe on because they will stand there for 45 minutes. A long and time. Watch yes. <laughs> yes, they will. Oh, I love yeah. those ideas. Um, okay. So I tried to think of our littlest, uh, listener kids first. Um, because we're probably going to end up talking a lot about crafts and stuff for older kids, but um, a tent or a crawl through tunnel, any one of those like nylon pop up apparatuses that you can store in a closet doesn't take up too much space. But when you unfurl it, it becomes some kind of indoor. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like the crawl through tunnels. Oh, or, when I was a little, I yeah. remember clearly being like two or three years old and coveting yes. those so much and then finally getting one and thinking it was like the best thing. Totally. It's, it's a tunnel. That's all it is. But, but the thinking nice it was the thing best is thing ever. They, they're relatively inexpensive and they fold up small. Yes, so we're not yep. talking about. But if you're stuck inside, you might as well turn your entire house into blanket forts. And yep. I mean, you're not going anywhere. So there's no keeping up the pretense that everything is in its place. So right. pull out the crawl tunnel. I also have a purple kind of princessy tent like thing mm -hmm. that I think about getting rid of. And then I don't because it's not taking up too much space. And when I get it down, the kids go in it. It's quite, It's kind yeah. of like. I'll, I'll actually link to it because I think they still sell it. It's super cute. Um, and so those things are great go to's and they're not very expensive. So buy one now for your next um, stuck inside time. Sarah, great. I have to ask you this uh, about, uh, on the topic of sort of physical play. Yeah. Indoors. You don't really have a space in your house for outdoor toys inside because you don't have a basement, right? You don't have a basement. In my Arizona house, we had a loft. So we had yeah. um, a, a more open space, but not in this house at all. Do you let do you let the kids use any outdoor stuff inside um, on bad weather days? Like scooters? Like what? Yeah. Are you, yeah. Like yes. scooters or like little ride on toys. I mean, they're big for that stuff now, but yeah. when they were little. Yeah, definitely. I would yeah. I would let that stuff come inside for sure. Yeah. Like the the cozy coop car. We rock yep. that around yep. the yep. inside for sure. And then um, in this house, we do use our garage, but because it's not cold. So right. you can go in the garage. We have those big, um, the big brick blocks that are made of cardboard. You know, the ones like, you oh can, yeah, the kindergarten yeah. classroom. Blocks. Yes. Yep. And, <laughs> yep. and that's another thing I keep thinking of getting rid of, but I don't because kids use them and the, the girls use them to play school. Now they make little desks for their dolls. And so they're still using them. So I keep them yeah. around. So yeah. And that is like a garage, which would be like basement for you toy, but that could totally yeah. come inside. I'm like, if we're stuck inside, there are no rules like we can make a blanket <laughs> fort of the entire family room. So, well, I thought of it because, you know, that I had those scooters inside my house for a yes. long time. I finally <laughs> they finally have ended up like permanently outside. Yeah. I don't know how that happened. But after we ended up getting um, the was it a kick. Yeah, kick micro scooter? kickboard, Mi mm -hmm. micro kickboard. Thank you. Um, the, everyone loved it so much and they didn't want to wait for the spring. So we just they just rode it around the house. Yeah. And it wasn't like a rainy day thing, but it really helped to like give them something physical. Yes to be able to do. And so that was also when my kids were really little, we always had some kind of ride on toy. No, no uh, matter what our living situation was like. Yeah. And that just made me think one of my closest Arizona mom friends, um, who was always the mom who had like great crafts and things to do yep. in the house. And she, in the Arizona summers, which are like your winters, she would have the ride on cars, like the fully battery yeah. operated, like not <laughs> yeah. the little cozy coops, but the ones they could push. But, the ones that go like five miles an just, hour. And they'd run yes. into the wall. There were yes. little dings in the wall, but it was like, this was better than the alternative, which is right. kids like pulling each other's hair out. And yes. so, yeah, her, her kids were driving in circles in those cars inside in the Arizona that's summers. So Cause that's what you gotta do. That's what um, you gotta do. You meant speaking of things you got to do, you mentioned 
uh, pillow and blanket forts. You and you don't and like so, this idea. <laughs> well, no. So when when things are really dire, like yeah. when we've had snow days that have gone on and on, like last year or maybe it was a year before. I think we it was had two years ago in, when you had. Yeah. We had an entire week of snow days the week after Christmas break. Oh. So we had two weeks of Christmas break, and the kids never went back to school because there was so much snow. So we were like snowed in for basically oh three gosh. weeks because the entire holiday was crazy too. Um, so when we, so in those situations, I have allowed my kids to just destroy the living room. Now I have to avert my eyes yes. because as you well know, I have a real problem with couch cushions reaction. on the floor. A physical... Yes, it's like a very visceral reaction to seeing a, a dismantled sofa. I can't, I just can't with it. I don't know. But I would just say, okay. If the kitchen there, the living room's yours, just do what you will. And they, yeah. you know, they would come up with these really creative ways yeah. of lining up the cushions and then using yep. blankets to hold the whole thing up. And yep. yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just like, like letting your, you know, your friend letting the kids drive their cars into yeah. the walls. It's like, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, you do. And there's, a, there's sort of like an element of surrender, which kind of feels good because yes. we've talked about this before. Like when things are dire, you have to kind of let go of the rules anyway. So you might as well let go and just trust that you're going to put the cushions back on the couch and you will get your life back together. And, you know, the idea of this episode is how to stock our houses. But what we're really talking about now is like how to use what's already in your house mm -hmm. and use it to keep everybody entertained. And some of that means just letting go. I've definitely, I think I've said this before, but I've definitely taken entire bins of toys, like the miscellaneous toy bins and dumped them out on the floor and just let the kids kind of like, like it was a pinata, just let right. them find stuff they hadn't seen in a long time. <laughs> and of course the floor was covered in crap, but I knew they'd be entertained going through it. And then at the end, I'd probably chuck half of it because it needed to be gotten right. rid of anyway and put it back together. So it was like yeah. a little bit of both. Um, Speaking of bins, I want to talk about dress up clothes, because I think that's another one that kids might kind of forget about. Unless you have a, a kid who's really into dress up, they might forget about it for six months. But if you have a bin of costumes, old Halloween costumes, hats, magic wands, um, something about pulling that out and just letting them go through it all um, is can definitely take up time. I think it's a great sibling activity. Dress up like my kids will put on plays. Yeah. Um, and that is. I don't know. Maybe it's romantic of me, but I think a good dress up bin is just such a staple for creative it play. Is. It doesn't have yes. to be expensive. doesn't have to be perfect. They just, they love it. It's a, and that, that phase goes, I think from like two to 10. I mean, most kids can have fun with a dress up bin. So that's, yep. that's a staple in our house. We keep ours um, in the garage and then we have another little bin upstairs. That's more like accessories hats mm -hmm. and purses and <laughs> i just uh, that i love seeing my kids get into that kind of stuff and, and they don't have to be costumes like, no yeah the, the dress up bin can have some oversized stuff that doesn't fit them yet and like a hat yep and Apron, old a feather aprons. boa yeah. i mean just like random stuff anything that's not clothes that they would wear every day that's yeah. Yeah, a little different and that they can use creatively. Yeah. And how Halloween, old Halloween costumes or masks, um, yep. all of that can go in the dress up bin. And there's something that just feels special about pulling it out. And then you yep. never know what they're going to get up to. So exactly. That's a good one. Um, let's see. So I have a couple in terms of like crafts for mm -hmm. older kids. I have a couple thoughts. Um, so one is I'm a big fan of projects that don't like necessarily have to have a beautiful finished product but that yeah. they just keep they just them do busy. it so my two right. my two examples are perler beads or what else are they called um you know the little teeny tiny plastic beads that go on yeah. the it's perler beads there's another name for them too and i'm blanking out um fuse beads that's what my kids call them fuse beads um now if your kids are really little this is probably you're not in this phase yet because there's they're so tiny and if they spill you will cry cuz they will <laughs> go everywhere but use a cookie sheet that's always been my hack yep. um to contain those and there's something about like it keeps them busy cuz they use their teeny tiny like pincer grasp to put the beads on yep. the plastic thing and then my kids half the time forget about it i don't even iron them to fuse them together or I, I do, but it's like three days later and they never do anything with these fused pieces of plastic. They right. never they, do anything. Yes, those will so, be tossed. So like I exactly. But it's the process and they it keeps yep. them busy. Um, and then shrinky dinks we talked about in our um, holiday gift guide episode is another one where the process of coloring them, shrinking them and then they, they don't do anything with them. So I right. think I think those are and all those kinds of things are relatively inexpensive. And it's not it's not something that you have to keep all the parts together or it won't work again. That's like, that's where it kind of becomes a deal breaker to me. These yeah. are, you just have, you have the fuse beads, you have a few of the little trays, you have the shrinky dinks and you can get them out anytime. Yep. 
those are great those are all great um i want to talk about you know well to the point about crafts and stuff i think it's always just important to have like blank paper on yes. hand yeah. it goes amazingly quickly it does um so sketch pads you can buy sketch pads anywhere you can get them at the drugstore i mean yeah. like anytime i kind of the way that I used to be about stocking up on bread, I'm that way now about stocking up on paper because Clara is such a yeah, prolific Clara is a, artist. Yes. So, yes, she needs paper. Um, so that's just always a good thing to have in different formats in different areas of yep. the house um, and just check on. And always making sure you have, you know, pens, pencils and markers. Those can also be amazingly like hard to find for yeah. some reason, even though, you know, you just bought them and now suddenly you can't find any markers and, you know, or all the pencils. Um, are flat or broken yeah. and you can't find batteries for and you don't have batteries sharpener <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah just something else to think about um but something for older kids like i wanted to, to talk about that because it's yeah. like like william and owen aren't probably gonna do um you know a bath right to keep them busy <laughs> and they're yeah i'm not gonna be able to wow them with like an unopened sticker pad no sticker pad <laughs> right like hey honey look a new coloring book so i've had to get actually more creative as they've gotten older yeah to use that time and so we tend to play board games that um are the really long ones yeah. that i wouldn't play any other time yep um we do that and also i'm not a video game person at all and it's not i don't like video games but i also i really can't play them well i'm really yeah. um i'm really bad at the depth required like to go like i was really good at mario brothers when it was left to right yeah Oh, up yeah, and down. that's so true. Uh, but then as soon as games became three dimensional and you were going like into the game, <laughs> I just couldn't like I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to make the buttons work. It's also the thing where I'm not sufficiently motivated. But anyway, right. all that said, um, there are games that are more friendly to people like me. And I find it worth it to have one on. Like, I think Wii's are fun. Yeah, because it's you're holding something and then yeah. you're, you know, like moving it and it yep. makes sense to me. Um, another game that I really got into was rock band, which uh -huh. it's like, that was the game that catered to my needs. Yeah. <laughs> and we spent a lot of time. Or there's um, like over guitar our, hero, dance, yep, dance, guitar hero. And like those. Yeah. yeah. Those sort of like in real life games, yes. but they're more musically inclined. And I will definitely make an exception, um, and play games like that for hours on yeah. days when, you know, we're stuck in the house. Yep. And so it's just good, good stuff to think about. If, do you have something that everyone can use together? That's kind yep. of multi-aged. Um, do you guys have a karaoke machine? We did, and it never really worked. Okay, I've never had one, but I feel like with your family and age ranges and yeah, all of you being it just musical. it wasn't it it just didn't really work as well as I'd hoped it would. Um, but honestly, for us, rock band kind of took the place of that. Okay, got it. Because you can sing into it, and right. yeah. So, yeah. although I will say, I also only ever sang on rock band. Yeah. I refused to learn how to use a guitar. I did drum. I would drum or I would How sing. How diva-ish of you. I was. I, was, I will yeah. only sing. I will only <laughs> sing because I knew I could always get a good score if I sang. And so I didn't want to have to learn something new. Yeah. I love it's that. It's all about me and my needs. Um. Well, for the on the board game note, we did a whole episode one time that I will link to. And if you haven't listened, that would be a great compliment to this one because we talked yes. about strategies for playing board games, especially if you have mixed age kids. And then we also talked about our favorite board games. So hop yes. over. If you are stuck inside, that would be um, a go to and get on your Amazon Prime and just I was going to say, get on yeah. it now and get those games ahead yep. of time, because we've got some really good recommendations yep. in there and also ones that we didn't like so much. As yep. I recall. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, OK, so I'm going to skip around. I have another thought. And, th and this is just random household stuff that you can use creatively for play. Um, so I'll just mention a few flashlights. That was also mm. part of my gift guide episode. I don't know why kids love flashlights so much, but you can't have too many cool. and little ones. And I, I find the battery life is better these days. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. well, cause they're led, I guess that's why, but, um, I don't run into battery issues as much. So small flashlights, kids love, they can play flashlight tag. They can take them into a fort. A two-year-old can operate a flashlight and have fun. Um, I will also say glow sticks. If you wanted to stock up on something yeah. that would totally keep kids busy, um, glow sticks and hide them. So your kids don't know that they're there until it's a rainy day. And then glow sticks yep. are awesome. Um, painter's tape. I'm going to give a shout out to Asha Dornfest and the awesome book Parent Hacks, which has like 25 ways to use painter's tape. And one of them is like make hopscotch inside. But oh, painter's cool. tape, painter's yeah, tape comes off of anything. So you don't have to yes. worry about that. You could make tracks for your cars. You could like, when we're talking about like kind of going big with this stuff, like pulling off all the couch cushions, 
um, I mean, your house becomes kind of a, a fresh canvas because you've yep. decided that there's no rules. So you could use painter's tape or, you know, your matchbox cars or make a hopscotch, you know. So that's something to stock up on for sure if you don't already have painter's tape. And then um, this is like borderline outdoor. So I don't know how this would work, but my kids have so much fun with squirt bottles just filled with water. Oh, so if you yeah. want to have a kid, quote unquote, clean, like the dishes in the sink, like a preschooler. Um, if there's maybe a bathroom, maybe they could go in the tub without water and then quote unquote, clean the walls. Um, yeah. <laughs> cleaning rags and squirt bottles will buy you lots of time. And you can buy yes. those squirt bottles in, you can buy them anywhere, but there's really cute ones usually at Target in the section where you buy, um, your travel toiletries, you know, where you buy like small shampoos, yep. there's yep. empty squirt bottles and they're even like bright colors. So I'll get yeah, like one yep. for each kid in a different color and it's like, they're a dollar. So. And and believe me, as your kids get older, they will lose interest in cleaning. So take advantage of it <laughs> yes. while you can. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, oh. Let's see. Anything else on your list? No, I don't think so. I think I hit everything. Yeah. It's really I... all about either. It's it's about preparing. But then if you find yourself in a pinch. Yes. Using what you already have. That's basically if we had to distill this down yeah. to the two step process. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Prepare when you can use what you can when you have to. Yep. And then once you're stuck inside, I mean, it's this is so much easier said than done, but, you know, use it as an opportunity to do the things you can't do when you're running around out right. in the world. I mean, yep. I, I find usually the first couple of days if we're sick, I kind of enjoy because I I clean or I do projects. I do decorating projects around the house, mm -hmm. especially if I'm not sick. That's the best case scenario. I'm not sick, but I'm taking care of right. little ones who are sick. You know, you put on music because you need to change up the mood or you watch a movie in the middle of the day. And so, I mean, there's a little bit of silver lining, maybe, although we know we know firsthand that it can be torture to be stuck inside. So. Right. Yeah. So we uh, hope that this was helpful. Yeah, I hope so. Um, so just real quick before we wrap, our listener survey is still open, but I'm going to close it at the end of this coming weekend. So the beginning of March. So get on there. You can go to themomhour.com and get a link to our survey. And please, please do take that. It helps us so much. Um, and then we also have an email newsletter going out this coming weekend. Um, and so if you have not signed up to get our emails, we have stuff in there that you don't hear about on the podcast, little treats from Megan and Katie and me. And so that's kind of a fun new thing we're doing. And you can sign up yeah. for that at themomhour.com too. You know how I feel about email. So you love, I love it. Email. And I love people email. write back when we send emails. So yep. it's another fun way to keep in touch with us. Oh, and don't forget if you are looking for a great way to keep your kids occupied, check out Annie's kit clubs.com slash life for discounts on the creative girls club or the young woodworkers club. Awesome. So all of that is at themomhour.com. This was episode 145, and we will talk to you guys next week. 